What's up guys? Working on some more cheap outboard motors. So behind me here is this Honda 10 horsepower. Uh, it's a 1980s model, but the serial number got ripped off, so I'm not sure the exact year. And I see these all the time on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist for pretty cheap. And I've worked on these motors a lot and they're pretty easy to work on. So here's the inside. It's pretty clean. The outside has some cosmetic issues, but I mean, that's fine. Uh, the previous owner said he did a compression test and it had even compression on both cylinders and it said he put fresh oil in it but couldn't get it running. So as long as it has even compression, it should be a good running motor. So I already got the motor up and running, but I forgot to film, so I'll go through the steps that I did to get the motor running. So I'm gonna take the previous owner's word for it that it has good compression. So I'm just gonna do a spark test and it takes 18 millimeter socket wrench to get these spark plugs off. Yeah, these spark plugs look basically brand new. So I'm gonna ground this to some metal and you should see some spark. So there's a handful of things wrong with this motor. One being it's missing the stop button. So there's supposed to be a rubber button and a little metal stopper that stops it. But I jimmy rigged something here. So basically all this is is a circuit. So once this goes into this hole, that stops the motor and it stops the circuit. Uh, another issue was uh, here is the original fuel connector and as you can see it's rounded and the newer Honda ones are rectangular and it's really hard to find the connector piece with this. I can't find it anywhere. So instead you need to have, I got this on Amazon, it was like 10 bucks um, and it fits through the hole like none of the other connectors will fit through this hole. Um, so if you you gotta find something small enough to fit through this hole and it's easy disconnect, you just pinch here and that comes off. And the last thing is, is that this motor wasn't peeing out of here. Um, so that means that there's a clog somewhere. Maybe it's blocked up in here from corrosion. So before going in and replacing your impeller when you're not getting any water flow, what you can do is you can disconnect this hose from this spout down in here and you can test your impeller as pumping water by disconnecting and you should have water flow out of here. The issue I was getting was that on this spout down in here, um, it trickles water down here and pumps water out of here. So if you have water flow out of here, that means your impeller is working and if you're not getting any water flow out of here, that means you have some blockage in here, which was my issue. So what I did was I sprayed carb cleaner in here cleaned out all the gunk so now you can see that it's flowing out of here. What you can also do if you're not getting any water flow out of here is take off this hose and I just have a little pick right here and you can see if there's any debris clogging the water flow. There was a little bit in mine. So upon firing the motor up it would run and then die so that's a clear sign that the carb and the fuel pump are probably clogged so here's the fuel pump here it's pretty easy to clean you just can get a flat head and then just take this off and there's a little filter right here usually there's debris that gets built up in here and you can just clean that out with some carb cleaner from working on Honda outboard motors in the past these 80s Hondas this carburetor right here is super finicky if there's any dirt built up in this carb it's not gonna run right so if you're buying a cheap outboard that's been sitting like one of these old Hondas you know, you gotta clean the carb or else it won't run right. So I definitely recommend investing in an inline fuel filter to catch any debris that's in your fuel tank. Um, or you can install one um, on this line right here since the fuel goes from the tank, it goes here to the fuel pump and then back to the carburetor. So as long as you have a some sort of filter before it reaches the carburetor, you should be good to keep dirt out of that carb. This is one of the easiest carburetors you'll ever work on. All you need is an eight millimeter nut driver and there's just two bolts on each side holding the carburetor that come off pretty easily. So now that I have the carburetor off, there's just two screws right here that uh, expose you to the float pole. And yeah, usually if your carburetor is not running right, there's some gunk built up in the float pole. Um, if you look right here, under here is your main jet. Uh, this is made out of brass, so you can get it off with a flat head, but a lot of times if it's been sitting, it's kind of seized into that position. So what you can do instead is I just straightened out an old paper clip here and you can push that down in there and then you can clean the main jet. Um, and you can also use some carb cleaner 
and some compressed air to make sure that that main jet in there is clear so fuel gets through. All right, the carburetor is all hooked up and clean and I pumped the primer bulb. I mean, this goes for any upward motor, but make sure that primer bulb is really hard, especially for this motor. Um, so to start it, this motor likes being choked once and then pushed back in and pulled again and it usually always starts that second pull. Here's my modified stop button. 